Good. Tiny Beans is a leading app and web platform allowing parents to capture and share content as well as receive recommendations on what to do or buy based on the child's age, location, and needs. Tiny Beans is launching a whole new parenting experience in calendar Q4 of this year with the goal of making Tiny Beans the go-to resource for all things parenting. We're honored to have Eddie Geller, CEO and also largest shareholder of Tiny Beans with us today. As a reminder, if you have any questions during his presentations, uh, feel free to click the Q&A button at the bottom of the Zoom screen, enter your questions there, and we'll answer the questions after his presentation. Eddie, thanks for being here with us. Thanks so much, Ian. Appreciate the opportunity. I'm just going to share screens and jump in, right? Yep, go ahead. Awesome. Well, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Eddie Geller, CEO of Tiny Beans. Uh, incredibly excited to uh, be here today and, and present our story and our plans for the future to all of you. I guess by way of background, I'm originally out of Australia. We started Tiny Beans in 2012 um, then, and I've always built companies, always been an entrepreneur, and then moved the company 2014. Well, I moved here with my uh, kids and wife uh, to New York about seven years ago to build out the business here. And now 100% of our revenues are here, um, all of our staff are here, and most of our customers are here too. So um, for those of you that don't know much about the company, this should serve as sort of a, an overview. And those of you that um, know a little bit about the company, we can obviously dive into more specifics throughout as well. We trade at the moment on the Australian Stock Exchange, listed a few years ago. We're also on the OTCQX. And then uh, a little over a month ago, we announced to the market our intention to move to NASDAQ. So we hope to uplist to NASDAQ in the next probably three to five months. Um, initially be dual listed, and then we'll take it from there to then have a primary listing into the US afterwards. So let's jump in and through this, you know, provide much more overview of who we are, and then more importantly, where we're heading. So firstly, before we jump into, I guess, the company, it's probably best to understand who are the people and who, I guess, you know, you're, you would be betting on if this is a story that you are interested in. So um, this leadership team is a first-class team I've recruited over the last, I guess, 15 months or so, um, and really come from incredible, you know, pedigree of companies, experiences, and are all parents who really have signed up to the mission of what we're creating and, more importantly, where we're heading. So, you know, Allison has come from Amazon, Meredith, Nina's come from Condé Nast and Wall Street Journal, Chris from Viacom, Mark and Kyle from brands like Kickstarter, Rent the Runway, QVC, so incredible brands all built very large businesses and large products in other walks of life and clearly exciting that they're part of the Tiny Beans team, all based in New York. So it's wonderful to get a team together all in the flesh and be able to plan together. Um, and uh, and I, I would say out of the 75 odd people we have across the company, we have about 30 in New York and the rest sort of scattered across um, the, um, the US with a few in other parts of the world. So that's, I guess, the headline in terms of the team and I'm happy to answer questions if there are specific things here you'd like to know more about. So at a glance, you know, Tiny Beans is really at the moment two things for parents. One is this incredibly you know, powerful way in which you want to capture your child's life using our Tiny Beans app and only share with the people that matter. So photos and videos, milestones every day. And then about 18 months ago, we acquired a, a parenting website called Red Tricycle where you can go into Red Tricycle and have a look at your content for this weekend of what to do in certain cities of, um, across the US, um, you know, have sparks of, of inspiration, of activities, products, et cetera. Um, so, so today it's, it's two, I guess, properties. The next month, excitingly, which I'll talk about this later on, it's all coming together as one. So one website, one app, all under the Tiny Beans umbrella. And I won't be talking about these two things. It's about one experience for parents to do all these amazing things that I'll talk about shortly. But at a glance, the, the company's gone incredibly well. At the moment, we run a July to June financial year, given we're originally Australian. Again, 2022, that's changing to calendar year. Um, and you, know, you can see we finished the year um, just on 8 million US, double what we did the previous year. And we're just on a great growth curve today. We've got wonderful accolades in terms of app star reviews, you know, um, wonderful partnerships in, from Apple, which I'll talk about shortly, but really the business is going very, very well. And we're just beginning. And I'll talk about some of the customer aspects very shortly, but what's wonderful where we're at is I think we've been able to build trust with parents. We have at the moment 4.3 million monthly active users, and that's all a wonderful audience we've acquired organically. 
we have not spent any money on marketing or paid media, which will change off the back of this new platform. But you know, the fact that we have that large audience, given it's all organic, is really a testament to the brand and really the value we deliver parents every day. So in terms of where we're heading and our mission, is really you know, tiny beans is where parents go. Today, if you think about how parents go about you know, solving the needs and the opportunities for their kids, they frankly start with probably search or they probably go to a social group or maybe go to a, um, a friend or a colleague or basically you know, a mother's group. There's really no destination. There's no starting point for parents to help. I mean, I'm a dad of four boys, 18, 16, 13, and 10, and I still think I need all the help I can get. Um, and I, there's a tons of questions I would love to have answered. But frankly, Google is a terrible experience, untrustworthy in all the things it recommends mostly. And then lots of other you know, um, avenues are difficult and provide sometimes more anxiety than the other way around. Tiny Beans and I'm on a mission to be the platform where parents start and they basically everything to do with the parenthood is going to be with Tiny Beans. So whether it's finding out things to do this weekend, finding a babysitter, finding a product, finding another parent who can help you in the journey of potty training or getting ready for school, we're going to be that platform. We're not there yet, but definitely I think over the next couple of years, there's no reason why we can't lead this space, which at the moment is entirely open. And I'll talk about the metrics of basically the size of the market shortly. Um, it's entirely open and no one's doing this. And I think, frankly, we have an incredible opportunity to be that platform given We've been able to deliver wonderful, trusted experiences for over 4 million users without any marketing to date. So in terms of the market opportunity, you probably be, you know, um, can relate to this anyway, given we're talking about parents, but the 72 million millennials in the US, they start with their devices, go to bed with their devices. So very, very connected to everything digital. Huge amounts spent on digital advertising um, across the US and around the world. And then the biggest follow me metric, which I think has the most sense given where we're heading, is around over a trillion is spent on babies and kids every year in the US alone. And just when you pause and think about that, it's huge. And you know, the average, you know, there's lots of stats that suggest that it costs about a million dollars over the course of 18 years in terms of like you know, cost and and, and, uh, and ongoing costs to basically, you know, bring up children. And, you know, you know would parents spend, you know, 0.01% to improve that? Would they sign up for a subscription? Would they, you know, buy more things to help them in that journey to feel more confident, to win at parenting, to basically feel like they're doing the best thing for their kids? I'd say a resounding yes. Um, and all the parents I've spoken to, it's an absolute yes. So I think there's a, just a huge opportunity. And I think we're, as parents, we're using hundreds of places to do this. And very little of it, I you know, basically you trust. So that's really the opportunity that I'll dive into. And the last one I just want to add is, I'll put in here really US-based metrics intentionally, but but really there's a huge opportunity globally. Um, you know, to launch basically all sorts of services globally. There's nothing out there around the world that, you know um, that offers this. But definitely feet are on the ground, and there's more opportunities in the future. But the US is definitely very lucrative on its own in the next year before we go into other markets. Some highlights of the last 12 months, we, we delivered 8 million US, 4.3 million monthly. I just mentioned the cash burn over the last 12 months has been really respectable, over 400,000 a quarter US. That's definitely um, increasing as we're ramping up a very big launch, like Ian mentioned, next quarter, actually next month, we're launching a whole new platform, which I'm excited by, which I'll show some of the screens for in a minute. And the business has gone very well from a growth perspective. Um, at the moment, 85% of revenue comes from advertising. And the fact that we've delivered just under 100 proposals last financial year with brands, and I'll show you the brands in a minute, campaigns over 100,000 shows you, you know, the, um, the potential of the business given we're just starting. So again, the business is in great shape. Here are some other stats in terms of, you know, the business has gone very well. I mean, one important point to know is that we have a 5 million registered members their information, who they are, email address, et cetera. So the potential to really you know, convert them to paying subscribers, which I'll talk about shortly, is really quite incredible. So let's dive in a little bit about the business in more detail. So um, as I said, about 85% of revenue comes from advertising. We work with tier one brands like Lego, Amazon, Apple, Google, and they come to us to help them get their content in front of parents at the right ages and stages. So for example, Lego will partner with us to get Duplo as their product in front of parents of 18 month olds to five year olds because we have that information about their, obviously their kids and their parents. So we won't ever pass that information on to brands, 
but we'll then use that content and then um, add that to the platform and integrate that to the user so they can see that information. So that targeting is very central to our value prop to brands. And that's why we're able to attract you know, big brands given we're still a relatively small audience. And then also we have a relatively small revenue stream around consumer around 15%. That's come largely from subscriptions, small e-commerce and printing. The subscription piece is the biggest opportunity in the next 12 to 24 months. And then we'll layer in e-commerce later. And I'll talk about subscriptions, but again, next month, we're launching a whole new subscription platform where we're looking to really grow substantially and convert a huge amount of those, you know, monthly active users to basically paying subscribers, which we'll talk about shortly. So the business at the moment is 85, 15 percentage wise. You can see it's grown really nicely. Our, our strategic goal, which I've got a slide on this a little bit later, is actually get that to 50-50. 50% advertising, 50% consumer, and, and both are going to be accelerating and, and growing over the next few years. But we really believe that if we're going to be on this mission and really help parents in the journey of parenthood, for us it's about creating such a compelling experience that they're willing to pay for, buy more things from us, and that consumer revenue stream will definitely be larger than advertising in the future, but we'll always have a great advertising business. Here are some of the brands that we work with that advertise with us. So they're not channels for user growth, just to be clear, they're all partners we that advertise and basically um, you know, pay us, be on campaigns with us and are ongoing and growing with us. So, and, and just to sort of qualify the campaigns, the platform is really strong in brand awareness. So, so we do a lot, of, um, a, lot, um, a lot of work around brand lift studies, where basically brands want to understand here are our products. We want to make sure that our brand and our product is, is more pronounced and more obviously recalled post the campaign as opposed to pre the campaign. So there's some of the things that we, um, that we talk to brands about all the time, but it's, it's just really exciting to have these types of brands on our roster, knowing that we're continuing doing more with them, they're coming back for more. And clearly, we're looking to attract more new brands into the future. And, and uh, um, earlier on this week, if you want to have a look at our website or look at our releases, we posted a, um, a release for this quarter to give the market a bit more understanding of, of what this quarter looks like, even we're about to finish it. And it's a record quarter in the ad business and already have locked in contracts for next quarter that basically also represents a record quarter as well. So really, we're in a great um, place with our ad business and we're already selling into 2022. Another partnership that is very um, successful, albeit early, is Apple. So um, on the app side, Apple has chosen us to be app of the day a couple of times in the US, which is incredible given there's 4 million apps in the world. So incredible to be selected. But also last year, um, they launched a whole range of features around their Apple guides and maps. So you can go into Apple Maps, type in New York or Atlanta or Seattle, and Tiny Beans is the only platform that recommends parent-related content inside the Apple app experience, which is incredible given, obviously, there's many other companies out there, many other large companies out there, but it just talks to our high-quality editorial team and content we deliver. That's a partnership that is really growing nicely. It's still early days as Apple continue to invest in their Apple Maps and Guides product, um, but we see huge excitement and growth here. There's no monetary aspect in this partnership. It's really a channel for user growth and customers. And, and given we're launching a whole subscription experience around content and avenue for revenue as it converts to, to paid subscribers. So definitely an exciting partnership and watch this grow into the future. Here's basically some of the, uh, I guess, breadcrumbs of basically the app that's launching next month, which is very exciting. So today, if you download the app, it's largely all around memories. Um, and we're launching a whole new experience next month. And we're going to iterate on that for the next three months and beyond where content will be into it. So the screen in the middle, you'll see evergreen content. So everyone that downloads the app and opens it up will see content that, that's evergreen. No matter who you are, we'll give you that content all free. If you sign up to a paid subscription, though, and tell us a little bit about your, you and your kids, you'll then have this for you experience. And you'll see this experience on the right. And this is really powerful because in this case, you can see there's content for Joni, there's content for Jack, and it's all tailored to your kids. Jack, who's two, might be interested in dinosaurs and dancing. You know, um, Sophie, who's four, might be interested in science um, and um, soccer. So as you provide this information, every time you come to the app and the site, it's all, all catered to you. Interest, location, stage, et cetera. So that doesn't exist anywhere in the world. You can't get this anywhere. And so we feel, you know, excitingly that 
But based on our research and validation with the market and parents, it's a very, it's a very valuable um, piece, especially, you know, parents are time poor, they want to get to what they need quickly. And there's all sorts of evolutions. We're going to get to that. We built a recommendation engine. We're launching around data science. It's going to be learning about what we recommend, how parents interact with that content, and then that'll continue to get better and obviously look to recommend even more things in the future as we layer in e-commerce and other services um, as the business scale. So it's an incredibly exciting time for the business, especially as it relates to launching these services. So subscriptions. So we announced a little while ago, we're launching a subscription service called Beanstalk. It's, it's a significant upgrade from our historical subscription service. Just for context, we've had a, a, a subscription service around the memories piece, this last screen on the right-hand side, um, for a number of years. It's been a freemium-based experience where you can free to download the app and you also have an option, opportunity to upgrade to premium. And basically all that's being folded in to this single subscription product that you're going to get access to from a free trial experience and convert. And it's folding all these services in. So all the memories functionality, unlimited storage, high resolution, lots of features around memories. We're incorporating this personalization around content, which I just touched on, which again is incredibly exciting. And then we're launching a video first parenting community. So parents of twins can find parents of twins, dads of four boys like me can find dads of four boys and, and all that type of stuff and seek advice and feedback and reassurance. And again, that doesn't exist anywhere at the moment. The community part is something we're building out. It definitely takes us a little bit of time to sort of, you know, have that as a really valuable piece as to, you know, key piece as to why they sign up. Today, if you think about like the, the why conversion would happen, the memories piece is the most built out, although we are changing the user experience. The, um, the content is then next built out. And then, and then the community is basically a more, you know, early stage development project there, but that's going to accelerate through the rest of this calendar year. $5 a month, 40 bucks a year. And um, a tiny beans promise always holds true where we'll never sell your data and basically will always remain private no matter what. So this is our subscription product. We launched it to new users only a few months ago. And the early data is incredibly exciting. We're going 23% from download to paid conversion. So just to sort of unpack that a little bit, every 100 people that download the app, 23 people are paying. So there's a lot of funnel aspects. You know, they download the app, they register, they then start a free trial, and then they're obviously paying. So incredibly exciting. It's clearly a small subset of, of, of users. So we're not like celebrating just yet. Um, clearly, we want it to be much, much larger. We have tens of thousands of users and hundreds of thousands of users to sort of get the numbers right. But it's wonderful, at least we're starting with a high number as opposed to a, a low number, because we're going to experiment and test and validate all these things as we, as we grow. But really happy with early results. But really, over the next 60 to 90 days, will really be an exciting piece to sort of validate the early stages of this subscription strategy. And one thing I just want to point out, it's a question I often get is, there's nothing in here in the value prop that suggests no ads. The feedback from our customers suggests that actually, you know, um, parents want ads. They just want tasteful targeted ads. So there's no value prop here about a subscription where there's no ads, where um, people may think, oh, our ad revenue is going to tank. Not at all, ad, ad revenue is going to grow because we're also upgrading the ad experience. So they're much more woven in and also upgrading the ad product. We're launching video of ads, which we haven't had before, and other sort of targeting capabilities. So there's a lot of things that, you know, that are going on here, but I just want to sort of point out that we see both revenue streams really being super successful, not one um, cannibalizing the other. And that's some of the really important work we've done since probably February, March this year. Um, and for the, um, the people that have been following us, we've been doing a ton of, obviously, um, research, updating the market on this journey, and it all culminates to the launch next month, which is just the starting point. Just a quick, you know, uh, I know we don't, have, we don't have a ton of time, so I just want to get into Q&A. A quick snapshot of financials. Um, you can go over this in more detail. Everything's public, but I guess, you know, a quick high-level message here is that our margins are very high. So over 90% gross margin, the business, if we scale the subscription successfully and the advertising successfully, can really spin off cash for us to reinvest very, very quickly. So the fact that we've gotten to these types of metrics, given you know, um, the cost base um, is very, very robust. Um, so for us, you know, um, we've been continuing to invest in the platform into the future. Um, so this slide I think is quite relevant just to sort of unpack that a bit more detail. The company today, if we wanted to, would be very profitable. We already generate nice revenue. 
it, it grows itself as I said, with no paid marketing and no marketing at all, we could already obviously be profitable and be very comfortable with that. Not with me. I'm very ambitious and I think that there's incredible huge market opportunity here. So we've been investing um, you know, a lot of the you know, potential profits, I guess, into the platform for future growth. And there's some of the things I already mentioned, so I'm not going to go through them in detail about the future growth potential of the business. So we're in, in this growth stage of investment. And as the revenue grows, we'll continue to double down and invest in some of the, 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 the core services to continue the future growth of the business. So a couple of slides just to wrap up, if that's okay, um, Mike and Ian. Um, this is basically just demonstrating the, the potential for this 50-50 stream. And I think if you extrapolate three to five years out, I think most revenue uh, will come from consumers. And I'm excited for next year to, to launch a whole e-commerce offering, recommending you know, three products by, you know, you know, recommended by other parents like you. This whole paradox of choice, I think, is a massive challenge for consumers, more so parents as well. I hate going to Amazon and getting like 38,000 results. I'd rather have three recommended by other parents. There are other things we're going to layer in the future, e-commerce. And then the big goal, I think, is a marketplace potential. But again, you know, you're very much very focused on the now. And this is really just, you know, um, uh, important to sort of share. I know the slide probably has a lot of information, but the key message here to understand is that we're just starting paid media now. So people may ask me, what's your CAC and LTV and what's your return on CAC, et cetera. We'll know that more in the next four to eight weeks. We've just started paid media as a channel. And then we're obviously after that going to be launching PR, influencer marketing, et cetera. So all those core metrics you probably know and appreciate in SaaS-based businesses will begin to get better at over the next handful of months. And then really we'll look to scale that into the future. And that's the exciting bit today. So um, the last thing I just want to leave you with is these are the key bets we're making. Enhancing the customer value prop to grow lifetime value, enabling the platform for that scale, channels, users, security, of course. We have a lot of you know, important information on, their, on, on parents and their children, and then elevating the brand so we become the, the go-to brand. The Tiny Beans becomes synonymous with parenting, and we become like you have to get a subscription to Tiny Beans if you're a parent. And when you learn you're having a baby and a baby registry, you'll get Tiny Beans you know, subscription Beanstalk as part of that subscription as part of that registry. So they're all the things we're thinking about in terms of scaling the business. So it's just a great time to get involved and, 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 and follow the company. We have a great team, a single brand, and I, I think we've delivered really nicely, albeit the fact very little capital and little, um, I guess, invested growth to really build something you know, pretty substantial. So that's the, the overarching pitch. Hopefully you've enjoyed it and happy to answer questions at the moment. Eddie, thank you for your presentation. Um, we'll start out with the questions we have from the audience. Uh, and the uh, initial set of questions is, uh, there's a couple of people that have asked about competition. Um, so to start with, um, can you just kind of describe the competitive landscape? Who are the biggest competitors and how do they compare in terms of user figures? Sure, it's a great question. I think if you, if you sort of isolate some of the services we're offering, and there's definitely competitors within. So if you look at the memories piece, there's sort of some niche apps, a handful, most have failed, um, most have closed because they haven't built a sustainable commercial model. And then there are the, um, the generics, right? You know, the Googles, the Apples, you know, the Amazons, et cetera. And they're, they're sort of solving the generic you know, solution for those, you know, everyday trusted, you know, ways in which you want to capture memories. Um, if you think about the content piece, there's thousands of generic content sites around parenting, right? And really... As parents, we trust Google and then spend 45 minutes checking all these websites out to see what's the most relevant. And that's where the personalization piece, I think, is a powerful moat that I think will be, be a unique piece. The parenting community doesn't exist. There's no way and I can go to a parenting community. Like, yes, there's Facebook groups, but nothing like I'm talking about. And frankly, hard to trust to even get to um, an understanding of the content. So um, it, there's definitely, I guess, competitors within each certain segment. Um, but the fact that we built an incredible brand and a value prop to parents, given we spent no money in marketing, shows that there is something truly compelling here. And I think bringing it all together presents really a, a differentiation that, frankly, no one is doing and no one is thinking. And, and, and I think we're creating a whole new category here, you know, bringing all these services together that creates, you know, not only unique competitive advantage, but a moat that I think can really be, you know, um, I think sustain us for, for many years to come and scale the business. Because fundamentally, the number one thing this all starts with is trust. 
And I think if we're able to garner the trust and create utility with a parent, especially at an early stage, we can, you know, we feel retain the parent, engage them for a long time to come. All right, thank you. So I think you've somewhat answered this, but I'll throw it out if you want to um, add some more color here. Sure. Um, so um, face, uh, there's there's a question regarding Facebook groups, WhatsApp family groups, and so I think those are kind of the you know sort of the generic sites that you mm-hmm. referenced. Um, and so the questioner is wondering how you plan to differentiate differentiate your offerings from companies like that, which you've probably somewhat answered, but maybe I'll give you a, give you a shot at delving further into that. Sure, thanks, Mike. So, 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 so I, um, I definitely put WhatsApp messages into the same group as some of those other generic tools. And that they're really good tools. I mean, I use them personally. They're really good for sharing. They solve the problem of sharing a memory in a real-time capacity to a group of people that you want to share with. But it doesn't solve many of the other problems that that we can solve for you in terms of organizing all your kids' memories in one space, the ability to capture, you know, lots of other milestones around the kid's life. So it's great for sharing, but for organizing, structuring, and then be able to tap into all sorts of other recommendations based on that, you can't do with those things. So it definitely solves one of them. Like if you had a list of features, the sharing aspect is that. But then again, also um, with Tiny Beans, you can share it with your great-grandmother who's 97 with an email address, and she gets an email every day of all the memories you've had up for the day. And she doesn't need an app, doesn't need a phone, a smartphone, and doesn't need to get into that you know, complexity. So, so we're, we're technology agnostic, whether or not you want to use uh, you know, uh, you know, a user who wants to use an app, who's a savvy aunt or uncle, or basically just want to use an email address, um, that you know, will definitely solve that problem. And then as far as the Facebook groups are concerned, um, they're great for very generic use cases. So you, know, you can have like, Golden Gate moms, and basically there's like 8,000 moms in the Golden Gate area that basically is part of this group. But if you've got a three-month-old or a 17-year-old, you have vastly different needs and wants and desires and problems and opportunities. So location-based, so location-based group actually doesn't necessarily help at all. Um, you actually want to get into much more like relevant um, parallels of another mom who's got a three-month-old you know, and that three month old maybe is your second, not your first. That's also different to, you know, the, the situation. So think of our, our, our sort of, I guess, experience around a much more tailored piece of your life rather than a generic piece of your life. And that's where Tiny Beans comes in. It's all about, I want to own parenting. I think we'll own parenting and you'll still use other platforms for other generic services, but um, it won't be your, your go-to for parenting. And that's really what we're creating. Okay, so the next question is, is uh, do you develop the website uh, in-house or do you outsource that? Absolutely, great question. It's all in-house. So we have a dedicated team, product engineering, um, that's all in-house resources, um, full-time and basically augmented with specialists, but again, all in-house resources. You know, many years ago in the early stages of the company, we definitely dealt with, I guess, quote unquote, outsourcing some of the aspects to um, other companies and it failed basically it wasn't a success many years ago so we learned that because the product is going goes through such evolution experimentation we get feedback from our users we capture data you really need to be in the team talking daily and we felt that an outside team just wouldn't have that level what well, didn't have that level of i guess not only commitment but just context to make those decisions every day so now everyone's in-house and i think they'll always be the case um, in the product engineering team. One thing though I will um, make note of, our editorial team is basically highly scalable. So we have a core editorial team full-time on staff and we have over 60 contributors all over the US that are freelancers that write content on a local level. So you'll have a mom in Atlanta who's basically writing content for Atlanta-based parents. You'll have a mom in Seattle talk, you know, um, write about content in Seattle. So those people, they're just basically contractors or freelancers for us, not on our, I guess, full-time team, so to speak. And that's a great way we can scale into other markets around the world because we'll engage with local, I guess, experts who write in their local cultural tongue, which I think is also a unique aspect of our value prop. To what extent is scaling of the, the you know, um, platform 
for a large audience a challenge um, because you're probably kind of a unique kind of website in that regard that there's not, you know, most websites probably don't have the kind of ba bandwidth requirements that you might ultimately have. Yeah, absolutely. Um, also a wonderful question. So we bet early on AWS, um, Amazon Web Services, um, back in 2012 when we launched our first app and website, and we've been partnering with them ever since. Um, so so um, first of all, the partnerships are very, very important. So the platforms we're using are very important. And then we have dedicated professionals in the team that do that every day. So in terms of scalability, security, um, accessibility um, is a critical aspect of our core service behind the scenes. And we're always basically running tests and evaluation on all sorts of things from performance, obviously testing, security, to obviously scaling up based on all sorts of things that we have. So um, the, the platform is vast. So photos and videos and content and bring those two together with a whole bunch of machine learning that we're building out. So, but the wonderful thing is that we bet early on a, on a platform that, that, that can scale. And now we're, we're, we're sort, of, sort of big enough now that we've got a dedicated team at AWS who we check in regularly, they're checking with us regularly and they're always helping us scale and grow the business, which you know, many, many years ago we didn't. We were one of, you know, on, a, on a online only and never really spoke to people, but now we have a dedicated team to help us with that scalability from a platform perspective. So the next question I'm gonna read literally, um, it says, I am a recent parent and have been inundated with ads on Instagram and have downloaded some apps uh, parenthetically, the, the wonder weeks dead up during pregnancy. Will we start advertising on Instagram and other channels like that? Yeah, absolutely. We, we literally just started last week. So we hadn't in the past. We just started last week um, advertising on paid media. I think it's going to be both on, on Instagram and on Facebook and also on Google platforms too. And, and um, that'll be over the next four to eight weeks. You know, and typically the way paid media works is you go through this early testing stage, testing a lot of messages, creative, um, you know, different um, uh, um, customers, you're targeting cohorts to then determine, you know, how much of it in terms of it's, what's working and what's not. So it's a four to eight week process where the four weeks you get the initial data set, you optimize it for the second four weeks, and then you look to really um, optimize it and scale. But yeah, absolutely, in short, you're going to start to see advertising um, of the product over the next eight weeks. But also, just one thing I'll point out, today, the advertising is largely focused on the memories piece, because those other features are not quite launched yet. But when we launch them in the next four to eight weeks and iterate on them, you'll start to see advertising that'll be around the other value props, around your tailored content. You know, you want to get an email in your inbox every Friday about what to do this weekend, sign up here. Like, you know, those types of things. So we're going to evolve the value prop in the advertising messages to see what obviously is compelling and what people obviously engage with and respond to. So you'll see the messaging evolve over the next three months and beyond, but we're really in a sort of fun early stage um, testing phase at present. Okay, um, next question. Um, so uh, a, a listener asked, uh, do you verify the parent's profile before onboarding them into the community? It's a great question. So, um, so basically, you know, today there's no, um, there's no, I guess, validation of the parent when they're signing up, right? So the parent signs up, tells us about their, their kids and, and that's basically it. In the community feature, so that's something we launched in, in April this year in a beta capacity to just really see how people would, um, would basically engage in a video first community. Um, and, and look, the results were, were really pleasing. We, we, we hadn't really um, built out many, many more features from what we had launched early, early on. And the guidelines and intent around it is very important in terms of parents engaging with other parents, obviously trusted each other, et cetera, because really your profile is public in this community experience. You're going to be saying that, you know, you have an alias, you've got, you're a mom of a two-year-old, you're a dad of a three-year-old, and that's going to be public there. So in terms of, I guess, um, validation, we don't have a validation uh, uh, um, step, and I don't think we're planning on that, but we do have a moderation aspect. So we really want the, the, the community to sort of, create a life of its own and really moderate its behavior and ensure that basically, you know, everyone's behaving and respecting each other accordingly in terms of like our, our, our principles of no judgment, you know, basically, you know, um, um, 
openly respond. There's no assessment on anyone else. And look, we'll see. You know, like any community and any sort of feature like this, I definitely expect there, you know, to be evolutions and we may have to put in place some more things. And maybe if it scales crazy fast, we may have to think about the moderation better and maybe incorporate some more steps. But for now, um, we're, we're looking to really moderate it based on the parenting that are in there. And our data suggests that if you're a Tiny Beans parent, you're already a type of parent that basically qualifies you for that type of mindset. So, but clearly as we scale, that's going to evolve and change. But yeah, we're definitely thinking the moderation path for now as opposed to the validation path for now, but we'll see as the community evolves and grows. So do you have any um, thoughts or plans on uh, uplisting the NASDAQ? Yes, absolutely. So um, we announced a few months ago our intent to uplist to NASDAQ. The first step of that was um, uh, moving auditors to we were with RSM, you know, and this is all public information. We moved to Grant Thornton, who basically uh, what's called PCAOB compliant, but basically we need to with SEC and NASDAQ to uplist here. So, and they need two years of audit accounts in US dollars. So that's a project that's been working on in the last three months. It's actually all culminating to finish next week as we wrap up um, the quarter and, and obviously release our annual report for FY21. And then we've also been in the thick of crafting our F1, which is basically the key document. It's basically F1 is, is, is similar to an S1, but S1 is a direct listing when well, you're not public already, but an F1 is what's called a, a it's through a foreign filing issue. So because we're already... Um, listed in Australia to be listed as a as a foreign company in the US. It's an F1, so we're in the thick of that. Um, and uh, yeah, we're very committed to being uplisted in the, in the US over the next, you know, as I said, three to five months. Timing dependent on a range of different things. And one thing I just might point out is that at the moment, about fifteen percent of our holders are US based, excluding myself. So a requirement as part of on Nasdaq is that if you're more than 50% owned by US holders, you'll flip the switch and you'll actually become a US primary listed company um, as opposed to a secondary listed company. And that'll probably be in the next 12 months too. So the NASDAQ path is an incredibly important path for us. And that's something we're doing in parallel as we also um, you know, launch this incredibly exciting platform. What is your strategy for, um, you know, sort of marketing to get the word out to, to um, you know, drive user growth? Sure, absolutely. Great question. Um, I guess we think about it probably three ways. First of all, there's, there's you know, the core marketing. And I mentioned some of the marketing tactics already in terms of paid media, PR. So you'll see as part of the launch of the platform next month, we'll do a bunch of PR. We'll also do other um, marketing tactics around influencer marketing. So there's definitely the marketing activity um, and that's going to be ongoing. It won't just be this one-off um, hit. It'll be ongoing throughout, throughout and into the future. The second part of, of that growth is partnerships. We've got a range of partnerships in mind. We've already mentioned one of them around, around Apple. We've got other partnerships we've already begun talking to to scale the audience and scale the revenue, of course, around subscriptions. So whether it's basically your baby registry or basically your maternity wards, there's a whole range of partners we've been in, in discussions with to scale the user base. And the third dimension is referrals. And that's what we're really excited by. So the ability for parents to refer other parents. There's a whole bunch of features we're launching um, probably later this year, early next year around referrals, where we're gonna gamify the whole referral mechanism through the community. You can invite other parents of the community that you know about, other parents that could benefit through these types of experiences. And again, the referral piece is a big third piece of that user growth, because frankly, every parent is an influencer. Every parent knows another dozen parents, 20 parents who can benefit in parenting. So we don't believe that you need like a one big ambassador, one big sort of A-list at the sort of hit out of the park or not <laughs> binary. Um, we feel it's a much more inertia, evergreen type approach where we're working with many people, they love the product and they keep telling more people about it. And that's really a key strategy that I think can build great scale. Well, thank you, Eddie. I appreciate the time this morning. Thanks so much, Ian. I appreciate having me. Thanks so much. Thank you. Cheers.